I recently had a question about a resource I have for my stories of Vietnam, for all the Vietnam writing I've been doing. And it was about these newsletters. These newsletters are quite nearly 50 years old. And at the time they might have just seemed like something fun, something that the parents would enjoy, but now they've become historical documents. This is October, November, 1974. December and January going into 1975 and February and March. Now, can you imagine this was written in, probably written and organized in early um, February, maybe late January, when the school where I went to was planning for the 1975-1976 school year. As we know now, the country fell on April 30th to the communists. So there was no chance that the school, as they wrote this article about, was going to have a new name. A new name, yes and no. They were actually planning to go back to the old name, the American Community School, which was um, in, in use way before the Paris Peace Accords, back in the 60s when families lived there with their um, working fathers. Well, they had, we, at the very end of the war, the Paris Peace Accords, we pulled out. Families were no longer um, safe or in Saigon. And then when they decided it was safe again, they would let them back in and started using the name the Phoenix Study Group. Well, if you read my stories of Vietnam of today, March 8th, 2024, one of my uh, schoolmates, much older than me at the time, did have a very harrowing experience with the Viet Cong during a basketball outing. Exciting, and I will let you read it in his own words. There was also an article in here about where to next year. Little did we know we would all be scattered throughout the U.S. This is the basketball article. It is in the Substack, so you could um, pull it up and read it in its entirety if you like. But there we were in Saigon just having a load of fun a bunch of kids in the Phoenix study group, a bunch of parents with high hopes for a future, a bunch of teachers and administrators making plans for a year that would never come. I'm Kat Fitzpatrick. I write stories of Vietnam and have a book called For the Love of Vietnam. And I hope that you are interested because we are coming up to the 50th anniversary of the end of the war. The whole war, the whole Vietnam era was a huge turning point for our country. I'm not sure what the answer is. As one young student said to me recently, what was it all for? I really don't know, but I don't think that we can go wrong by spending some time discussing it and looking into the details of that era. There are very many difficult stories. The stories I have to offer about my family living there in 1974 and 75 are generally lighthearted, but my mother did write home with some harrowing, harrowing uh, descriptions such as, oh, we just heard some bombs falling within the city limits, but they didn't hit us. Or we thought there, um, my husband, James E. Welch, found out he had a VC working in his, um, in his office and they probably know where we live, but what are we going to do about it? And last but not least, my father this is a plaque commemorating his rescue of over a thousand people at the end of the war, which I do recount in my book. Hold on, just a little plug. For the love of Vietnam, a war, a family, a CIA official, and the best evacuation story never told. And that's uh, me and my brother and some soldiers, which were not uncommon sight when we were there. I hope you enjoyed hearing this. If you have any questions, please do comment or email. And until next time, take care.